Greetings, geeks and nerds, and lazy nerds, and white and nerdy, and lazy wing is almost coming to a close, dear children. I can't believe it myself, but I've had so much fun, although, although mostly through this year, and don't worry, there's still a lazy wing special coming up on Halloween. That was just a little secret. Don't tell nobody else. Don't tell the other 400 and some people that are here. Shh. Our little secret. For the ones that are involved in this video, it's our little secret. We just won't tell nobody else. But, but I'm going to be ending it off on a pretty good on a pretty good note just to let people know on Halloween. But, I'm not going to talk about what it is just yet. Again, our little secret. But instead... <clears throat> If I can grab it. But instead, today I'm going to be talking about a series that actually has a lot of an interesting background more than the series itself. I'll talk about the series, of course, and everything. But we are going to be talking about the first season of an amazing TV series that wasn't for more than a mature audience, but the comic books behind the series were not. Again, I'll come back to this. But... I'm going to be talking about the original first series of the HBO cult classic, Tales from the Crypt. This will be my overview retrospective upon the series, the old HBO series, Tales from the Crypt, so just to let people know, just to be warned that there might be some spoilers ahead for people. So again, just to let people know, spoilers might be ahead for the first season of the original Tales from the Crypt, so if you don't want it spoiled, go and watch the series and then come back and watch this review. <laughs> For those of you that don't know, give me a minute here, Tales from the Crypt actually was not an HBO series. It actually was a comic book series. Yes, this series has originally existed years ago upon the medium of a comic book. So think of this, basically, in the form of one of these. And it would give you some idea of what you're looking into. But the comic book has a huge history behind it, and it's actually one that's pretty interesting. Also, in case you're wondering, the camera n the camera fell over at first, which I used to hold the camera up in a position like this, knocking down the mirror that I used behind it so I'm able to pause the video instead of blindly reaching around like an idiot and basically make a mistake. Yeah. So, let's talk about the interesting history, or the horrifyingly interesting history, behind what is the comic book that inspired this amazing series. Inspired by his father's fortune, these comic book company, or the comic books in general, were created by one William, aka Bill Gaines, who, who matched a fortune from his father, who used to be a comic book publisher, upon Superman, Action Comics, and various other comics working in the history of DC Comics. But, inspired by old horror, t horror series that you would hear on the radio, Tales from the Crypt and the Vault of Horror were suddenly born. Horror comic started to be on the rise during pretty much what was considered the late 50s, which was a new rise upon the comic book industry. As well as two other fancy editions, The Haunt of Fear and Crime Suspense Stories. Yeah. One of these is about horror stories that you can read or not read because you fear your parents walking in on you. The other is about crime solving, so basically L.A. Noir in comic book form. But from what I understand, this series actually was pretty damn decent, and for the most part, it really held up as one of a comic book great, especially doing well in a horror variety with O. Henry or surprise endings. And even, William Gaines was even an inspiring author by basically making some surprise stories that were pretty controversial of things actually happening around this time period. But eventually and unfortunately, EC Comet started going way too damn overboard with the gore, really up in the ante. At first, they played it casually, but then over time, it just got worse and worse and worse, and that it better. Which of course called forth the attention of one man who was known throughout the comic book world and is one who was definitely hated throughout the comic book world. One known as Frederick Wortham. Wortham was a very controversial figure. He definitely did things that was extreme. Um, he had a book called The Seduction of the Innocent where he wanted to ban comic books because they were the cause of juvenile delinquency. And thus, 
Yeah. He said that Batman and Robin were gay. He said that Wonder Woman was a lesbian. He entitled so many things that were complete and utter bullshit, where if he were alive today, his head would be spinning like Beetlejuice in what is going on in this world in controversy. He was a very good, he was a very stupid figure. He was trying to look after children's welfare all because he had children that went to him with basically problems. And it's like, okay, but comic books are not these children's problems. They probably aren't happy at home. Maybe their parents don't get along together. Maybe they get bullied in school. Maybe they have, maybe they're not doing well in school. You know, the grades are slipping. It's not had to do with juvenile delinquency. And again, I'm pretty sure if this man was alive today, whoo, he probably would already have, have died with what happened. But yes, because if it was with them, and the controversy behind EC Comet going way too overboard with the gore, he took William Gaines to court. So unfortunately, since to the controversy, William Gaines filed for bankruptcy and he lost EC Comet. Thus, he no longer basically wanted to do horror stories because he felt drained out because of this happening. The controversy is great to watch yourself if you have to, and especially William Gaines going on camera and saying that he's given up the world of horror comics is pretty great and also kind of heartbreaking. But while Beth being known for mad, years later, William Gaines would still be remembered as the father figurehead behind the amazing Tales from the Crypt series. Seriously, if you do have it, if you have the season one, please do check out the second disc involved in this thing, it would, and the special call entitled <clears throat> "Easy Entitled Tale from the Crypt from Comic Book to the to Television Series." It is amazing. I watched it more than once just because of how damn interesting it is. But with all things considered, let's dive into the first season of Tales from the Crypt. Now, I'm not going to review every single episode. We're just going to glance over. Went over the series as a whole, talked about what the series basically did, <clears throat> and maybe, um, I say maybe very heavily, and maybe talk about a few of the guest stars that the series had. But I can tell you about a few of the directors that they had, such as the great Richard Donner, and, and as well <clears throat> as the amazing and <clears throat> wonderful, I'm going to remember his name here, Ro uh, Robert Zemeckis. It had a lot of great guest stars upon it too, but mostly some great direct guest directors. As such, let's listen to the laugh of John Kassir and go down into the crypt hall. This is season one review of Tales from the Crypt. All throughout Tales of the Crypt, the Crypt Keeper is the opening credit. He lets people know what type of thing that they're going to watch. He basically is the storyteller in this basically scenario. He pulled out his book, he talks about a little introduction, and then he introduces you into the episode that you're going to be watching for the day. And yes, every introduction is different than the last. Every episode is different too. If you think that it's the same formula repeated several times over, you'd be surprised to know that no, every single episode is different than the last. That's because there were three EC horror comics. The Haunt of Fear, Tales from the Crypt, <coughs> and also, um... There is a Haunted Fear, Tales from the Crypt, and the Vault of Terror. Each individual episode follows a story from the comic book, so you're watching a comic book epi a comic book story come to life. Basically, it, this is like the old school Marvel Cinematic Universe or DC Cinematic Universe that we enjoy today. So it's kind of like Tales from the Crypt could walk, so the Marvel and DC Cinematic Universe that you see behind me could run. Every individual episode does have a unique guest star in it, and there are some that you would either recognize or not so much recognize. <clears throat> but I do like the fact that they don't follow the same formula of like every episode the same. The only thing that is similar is the Crypt Keeper given his introduction, but even though they're special in their own unique way. It's like having your parent come to you when you were a kid and reading you a bedtime story. There's just something magical that is involved in it. Every single individual episode goes through this type of, uh, type of formula, where if the Crypt Keeper introduces a story, 
and then you watch the story play out. Every single one is different, like you'll have one that's like monster horror, you'll have one that's body horror, you have one that's psychological horror, and the latter just kind of moves up and down that list, which giving you a special blend and flavor to anyone that is a fan of any individual medium of horror. I said it before, and I'll say it again. Variety is the name of the game. You have to change things up, make it look different, in order to make it be surprising to the viewer. Which, of course, for me, the variety of tales from the crypt is what makes it all the more intriguing. With that, you're not watching the same thing over and over again, but everything is different with each individual episode. But also probably what is the next greatest part are the special guest stars. The ones that really do excel and shine within this medium, which makes it all the more special. Like the amazing and multi-talented M. Emmett Walsh, who does a pretty good, pretty good finale episode for the original series. Uh, series of Tales from the Crypt. My complete collection. What do you think? Tell us, please. The multi talented, beautiful, wonderful, and Marty McFly's mother, or, well, yeah, Marty McFly's mother in the Back to the Future series, Oya Thompson. Listen, I've been thinking. Remember what you said the night we met? That girl of my dream stuff. Mm-hmm. Well, let me tell you. And the amazing William, aka Bill Sadler, is in the first episode who, I will be honest, gives a much more surprising appearance and a much more surprising role, and he gives the acting role his best within the role that he is given. But yet, I'll tell you what the biggest shame is. The series was pretty good, but unfortunately, it was only six episodes long. Buzz, are you okay? God! It's all gone. All it's gone. Bye bye. Woo see ya. Even for a television series, six episodes is not much. Twelve seems longer, but six is very short lived. I don't know if it was budget problems at HBO with Back in the day, HBO did have some budget issues, especially trying to manage out like like TV shows and movies that they would be showing back in the day compared to now. So I wouldn't be surprised if that actually was the case. But when you go back and look at the history of HBO and only see six episodes, I mean, it definitely would drive you to become Mrs. Nesbitt. Tales from the Crypt is a lot better than you would expect. The backstory behind it, from the comic book company to the legendary HBO TV show, is actually all the more interesting. I honestly would have done a review just on Tales from the Crypt, from comic book to TV show, basically only because it is such an interesting backstory and how this tiny little comic book became basically loved by the world, to be hated by parents and critics, especially were them. Yeah, nobody's ever gonna forget Frederick Wortham. <clears throat> and to becoming a beloved TV series. And do I recommend Tales from the Crypt? Well, yeah. I once saw a box set of Tales from the Crypt during October a couple years back, and I believe that it has either eight or nine seasons, which is pretty surprising in the short run. Hopefully that the other seasons have more episodes than just six, because it doesn't really feel like much with six. But with what we got, Tales from the Crypt was a surprising series, and in fact, the first time when I watched this series, I was surprised by how damn good it was. Especially having very intriguing episodes written and directed by very talented people, like I said, such as Richard Donner and Robert Zemeckis, just to name a few. Joel Silver was the producer upon the series, and a lot of people either love or hate Joel Silver, so make of that what you will. But as such, I would recommend checking out Tales from the Crypt this early wing season if you can. While it is a short series, especially season 1, which is where I would start, while it is a short series, it definitely is still beloved by many and still holds up as a horror classic, so I would recommend checking this out for this lazy wing season. It's fun, it's, cr 
It's fun, it's gory, it's amazing, and what do you expect? It's Tale from the Crypt. Guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter with a link in the description down below. I will use the double and nearly keep you can on. And be sure to check out Tales from the Crypt, whether it be all the seasons or just season one. Please do check out the series. It is pretty damn awesome and interesting for all this money's worth. So, indeed, do check it out. But anyways, I've been waiting for a new to keep each and all. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell icon. If you love Lazy Wing, then you never want to miss a Lazy Wing video. And to stay updated with everything, you can follow me at Twitter with the link in the description down below. And thank you guys so much, so much for watching. And you know, throughout most of this Lazy Wing, I'm actually surprised. We took a look at a lot of good, or just decent, horror movies. So hey, <laughs> I'm feeling pretty good. We're on a... We're on a roll. I mean, it's not like something could automatically just happen and basically ruin the whole entire Lazy, Lazy Wing season. I mean, last year I took a look at a very stupid horror movie with Devin Stein, but it's not like that could ever really happen happen again, now could it? Uh, sir, I, I don't mean to interrupt you, but, um, it, it, it could indeed get worse. Um, we have a couple of gifts here, and, um... I don't want to alarm you, sir, but it definitely does show that things are going to get worse before they get better, and especially with your Halloween treat that you want to give all your dear viewers, um, yeah, things, things, sir, are going to undeniably get, become total fucking dog shit. Oh, relax, man, I've, I've already seen everything from good to bad, and especially goddamn fucking terrible. You're looking at a man that survived both Christine and Seventh Sign. So, come on, it's not like things are just ultimately going to get that much more horrible for this ha Halloween season, are they? Oh my god. Things are going to become so much fucking worse within the next few days. No! 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 God damn you! God damn all of you! This is gonna fucking hurt. Uh, I've been good seeing the world, type of white nerdy, keep you can on, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, follow me on Twitter, link in the description down below, and until next time, keep you can on, and as always, both take care, and stay spooky. And I'll see you guys for a double dose of pain.